Hi, everybody. I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One. And what are the most powerful audio creative best practices? We get asked frequently about audio creative best practices from advertisers, agencies, and brands. And we have studied audio creative a lot uh, here at the Audio Active Group. Over the last eight years, we have tested hundreds and hundreds of uh, radio and podcast ads with Nielsen and audio creative testing agencies like ABX and Veritonic. So we have assembled uh, for your edification today some audio creative best practices. We hope that they'll be useful for you and your brand. So why focus on creative at all? What's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal. Nielsen conducted 500 sales effect studies across multiple media for a wide variety of brands and categories, and they found that creative is crucial to driving sales. In fact, it generates 47% of sales effect, 47%. That's more than all of the media factors combined. One of the leading media mix modeling companies, Analytic Partners, said creative is a key driver of advertising performance and campaign effectiveness, second only to the actual uh, size of the budget. So before we dive into our best practices, it's important as you think about your campaigns to consider what is the job of this particular campaign, because there's really two critical jobs that marketing has for your brand. One is to convert existing demand. The second is to create future demand. Converting existing demand is about targeting that small group of people that are in market ready to buy now and capture a large a share as possible. Creating future demand is going after that much larger group of consumers who are not in market, they're not ready to buy. They will be in the future. They're not even thinking about your category, but your job is to make them feel familiar and positively to your brand. So when they enter your category, they'll gravitate to you. So you have very different creative strategies, very different media strategies, depending upon if you're uh, focusing on converting existing demand or creating future demand. So for Converting existing demand, this is very rational copy. You're, it's product focused, price focused, it's persuasive because you're going after people that are in market. The creating future demand is about mass reach, mass targeting, and they're not in market. So you need to do something to be noticed. So you have to have emotional based creative or entertainment-based creative to stand out and to be enjoyed to create positive memories for your brand that'll influence future purchase decisions. So when you line these two strategies up, one's about creating a lead, the other one's about creating memory. One is you know rational and persuasive, the other one is emotional and entertaining. So determine what's the strategy and then the copy strategy and kind of follow uh, from that broader strategy. So now, here's our number one, number one, <laughs> audio creative best practice, brand early and often, brand early and often. Uh, we probably talk about this with advertisers almost every day. This is one of the easiest way to enhance the effectiveness of your audio creative. Get your brand in the first couple seconds of your audio creative and then repeat it frequently throughout the ad. Why? It'll grow familiarity, it'll grow affinity, it'll increase the number of people seeking out information about your brand, and not surprisingly, it grows brand recall. So the more you say your name, the greater the likelihood people will remember it. So this does not cost you anything, but it is a major way to improve um your effectiveness so uh we get asked a lot about uh this particularly and this is a piece of advice that there's a lot of data behind this from hundreds of podcast brand effect studies nielsen has conducted and lots of studies that we've conducted 
One of the questions that we get asked a lot is about spot length, and we are here to tell you don't worry so much about spot length. In fact, spot length is one of the least important elements uh, in your toolkit of audio creative. Why is that? Well, when you compare 30s versus 60s, you when you look at it, you don't really get a lot more ad recall when you go 60. You don't get a lot more purchase intent. So don't worry about spot length. Now, there are some creative best practices that are really, really important, much more important than spot length. One of them is message discipline. The more stuff you cram in your copy, the less people are going to remember. Millward Brown, one of the giants in creative testing and measuring brand equity, found that if you index brand recall and brand equity for ads that just have one message, and then you compare that to ads that have two, three, four messages, you see a steep drop off and recall. And in fact, that ad with those four messages crammed in has way less message recall than that one ad that had that one message. So message discipline. Another creative best practice is unification across media of your messaging. So don't have one thing being said in social and another creative approach in TV and then another creative approach in radio and then display. Millward Brown found that brands that have a unified messaging approach across media have 57% greater impact on brand equity. So be consistent across media. If you have somebody famous in your TV ad, have them on the billboard, have them in the radio ad. Unified messaging consistent across media. Hosts, uh, you've heard a lot about this, radio hosts reading your ad, podcast hosts reading your ad. The data is back. They have a significant impact on campaign effect and sales effect. Radio hosts on radio stations are loved by their listeners. Listeners follow them on social media. They call the station to talk to them. They'll visit websites of advertisers that radio hosts talk about. So they have a strong, strong impact. Same thing in the world of podcast hosts. Nielsen has conducted hundreds of sales effect studies and found that the difference between a host read ad and a non-host read ad is significant. You'll see 50% lifts in purchase intent, uh, recommendation intent, likelihood to seek it. So host read ads really, really move the needle and they move the needle on taking action. Uh, this is from a recently conducted Nielsen study, which compared uh, streaming audio, which of course doesn't have any hosts, uh, podcasts and AM, FM that do, and you see significant increases and in percentages of people that say they go to the website, they did a Google search, they talked to someone about the product, they checked it out. Um, so host talent red ads really knock it out of the park. And so does creativity. Uh, Les Bennett and Sarah Carter in the best book ever written on marketing and advertising, How Not to Plan, 66 Ways to Screw It Up. I'll talk about a major study that Peter Field, a marketing effectiveness expert did, and he found that ads that are creatively awarded are very effective and efficient at selling things than other ads. So creativity really pays off. So key takeaways before you start focusing on copy, consider what's the goal of this campaign? Is this about converting existing demand or creating future demand? Once you know that strategy, then the copy strategy can follow. Uh, number one, audio creative best practices, brand early and often. The first five seconds matter. Don't worry so much about spot length. Focus more on message discipline, being consistent across media with unified messaging, leveraging the appeal and trust of radio and podcast hosts, and those ads absolutely knock it out of the park. The Audio Active Group is a full-service advisory firm for national brands. We offer creative testing, creative best practices, planning recommendations, and measurement of campaigns. And each and every week, we publish a new case study or audio insight. You can find it on our websites, cumulusmedia.com or westwood1.com. And when you go there, you can sign up to get uh, an email each week with uh, the particular audio case study. 
thanks so much for the opportunity to take us through uh, our audio creative best practices. Thanks so much.